Anybody from the public that would like to speak on anything on the agenda this morning? Um, yeah, I brought a few of my neighbors with me for their ditch problem. Um, you guys did come out and did clean it out, and we thank you for all of that. Um, had you guys cleaned it out, if you go down and you look at the culverts now, you can see that at least the one down by me is like four inches tipped up, so the water ain't flowing. Um, you guys really need to do something with our water problem. Um, I run Mary, you can talk about what she goes through every every time you do a rainstorm on the water. Sometimes comes all the way out their house and into her house where she has to have a farmer come down and push the water back if it's a real bad spring. So um it affects all of us in this stretch, you know, and it needs to be that affects running crops, you know, if we have a farm in this field. Um it's got, you know, it should be drainage tile. If you guys got any questions on how drainage tile works or anything, Ronnie can tell you because this farm has been plowed for many, many years. Terry did some farming. This is the field tile. So um, we just want this resolved, you know, and uh, hopefully we're going to keep something more than just once a year so we don't get all that. I think at at some point, there was like eight, ten inches of dead grass in that thing. It was unbelievable when I was watching when we were digging all the green um, field down there when they pulled that grass off. Started pulling and just watching all that water just flow and just go, just like a toilet bowl. Just made a big circle and down into the tile, right through, got a crack. So, um, like I preach every, I guess about every month, you know, get it put on the agenda uh, a few times a year. So, um, Mary can tell you how much what goes on down by your house. So, that's all I got to say. So, let me hear your name and your address. Don't let anybody speak. Name and your address. Name and address. Okay, well, my name is Mary Clemens. I live four three seven six Hellview Road C. And um the property there is is like some spring. It I don't know if you guys live around that road or if you've seen the issue. They come here that has to come out every spring that I call them ahead of time. Because as soon as spring is going to be coming, the water flows and flows and flows all winter long. It never stops ever since they built that water plant. I used to mold that ditch. I haven't been able to get into that ditch with a mower without getting even like this close to it without getting buried with my lawnmower. And it backs up and it floods. And as the winter freezes, it puts another layer of ice. And then the water keeps coming from the plant and it keeps coming down the ditch and it freezes. The people who work for the county all know every spring I have to, I don't even have to call them because they've been doing this ever since that plant. They have to come high, high covert. It's frozen solid. It's a complete solid ice block from the whole thing. They can't even get it a lot of times on the very first time when they come. They have to come back. It's just a waste of time and stuff. If the water would have to flow through the ditch and could flow away, none of the culverts would freeze out. The whites freeze. Everybody's freezing because the water just continues to flow and flow above it and it freezes above it and it freezes. And then whenever there's uh, any kind, especially winter thaw, that year, my entire, it was backed up, completely frozen, 
I get water almost every time it rains really heavy, coming all the way up to the house. Two times it's been in my house. The water will not run away. It won't flow away. I had to call Dan Ziggenhagen, who's a farmer down the road. He had to come over, and it's the middle of winter, and spring, you know, and he's trying to plow through along the lot line to divert all the water that's coming into my house, through the rods, through whatever. I've sent videos, and I've sent pictures to, I don't know if there's anybody in this room, over the years of the flooding, of what happens, and the destruction of, of my house. I mean, and it never, ever did that prior to when they put that water plant in. And I don't know if they hit a well or what they did, but I, I always have water running up almost all the way to the house. And two times in my house. And that does that has to stop. I mean, you know, part of me is like I should sue. I mean, because of the water in the ditch, because of that backup, because of it it's ruining that water standing in my house. I mean, it's crazy. And if you need the videos and those kinds of things, I could try and get it back off my phone. But I've submitted it to the Algoma Town Hall. I've submitted it to whoever the old commissioner was. I submitted it to the state representatives. I even sent, like, I was talking to Kenny Baldwin and Compton. I mean, it's just, and everybody says it's not my problem. Well, something happened cause this problem and something should be done to stop it. That water needs to flow. I should be able to be in there right now mowing my ditch. And I can't. We've always maintained it out there. Every single one of us along there. We mowed it and kept it nice. Now it every once in a while there has to pull me out of the ditch because I try to get too close. <laughs> It wouldn't get stuck because it's such a mud pool. That's yeah. I'm I don't want to interrupt you. I'm Mary Silva. I live in 4689. Right beside Mary, between Mary Clams and Brian, Richard White. Um, yeah. As neighbors. We're trying to help you guys. We're we're trying we're trying to keep that mode, we wire, blah, blah, blah. The whites do it, we do it, Mary does it. On right up. We're trying to help you guys keep that water flowing. We know we can since they put that freaking pipeline in. That's right. Yep. That's when the shit hit the fan and it was just almost impossible. I mean we whack my wife sprays it. We're trying to we're we're trying to we're trying to keep it so it looks decent, water can flow. You got a ditch, it should be full of water. It's not supposed to be a river there or a mud hole. It's supposed to be a ditch that flows of water when it rains. I don't know what else to say, but I'm, I'm, I, thank, I thank you guys for coming out and at least trying to do something that did make a big difference. So if we can keep keep at it, keep that summer gun mowed and, and clipped or whatever, keep the rest of it. That would make a big difference. So, thanks again for that's my piece. Anybody else have a piece? Yeah, I'm on 4860. Um, the one hiccup without your time is the piece of screen that's the 13 million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all I got is I'm on the opposite side of the road, uh, it's a farm field. We burned up our ditch on purpose, and now it's starting to build the burn and then we can't get down in the You know, water seeks its own level in the water. On our side, it's higher because it's currently, you guys are in the end of the Anyways, yeah, I'm 
I don't know what you guys did the other day when you dug it up. It, it seems to be drier right now. The water is standard pond. But since that was dug up, we put it in the city water and sewer. I actually had to put an extra sump hole in my basement because my sump pump drop is 365. It didn't do that before they came up. Have to have to do something to be cold. That thing runs probably about every 20 to 30. It could be 25 below outside. Still, my soft pumps are still around. Water that pumps are. And they did not do that before. I don't know what happened. At least I think that's why it's working here. But like if my power would go out out there, my basement would be flooded and it probably uh, I can come back a minute. I think it's been studied, it's engineered. Everybody knows what did happen there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I want to say one more thing. Mr. White is right. We got the same issue with our cell phones. People actually put it on a generator, generator just in case the freaking power goes out. So because for cell phones, the cell phones alone, I don't give a shit about the lights or the TV, but the cell phones are important. So I got to say that. Anybody got any questions? Else? I might want to get here to discuss that. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> Any so we did go out there. We did some ditching out there. Um, you know, just first thing, I mean, we get hundreds of hundreds of people calling that there's water in their dish and flooding issues. I mean, I know we've talked, we specifically talked on over on S, that area over there. Uh, there's double H, there's H there. I mean, I can name, we've got a list of them. You know, the, you know, Winnebago County is very flat. When you look at uh, Topo, it's, it's very flat. You do have hilly areas in some locations. Um, the unfortunate thing is a lot of these areas, it's just so flat. We don't have anywhere to go. I mean, we did get some ditching out there. I threw, I took some pictures and these are from this morning. Um, that first picture is that Ziegenhagen's, that drainage way. Um, you know, You're referring to the upper right? Here. Oh, okay, next. Okay, got to turn the page. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, as that water comes down that way, I mean, once it gets off a of proper private on the private property, um, you know, we there's very limited. We can't go on private property to do ditching. Um, by looking at it out there, I don't know. You know when Ziegenhagen that ditch was you know last at all? He mowed, he mowed it. Well, I'm just saying is so we got that water to go that far, but it needs to be ditched. It needs to be ditched. Ditch well, right, and that's what I'm saying. Is, I mean, we we went as far as this is from this morning, right? So, so I mean, it is wet from know, that ditch. Tile. Hey, tile. And so yeah. when it when it gets to that where you see so that picture there, I don't know where. Right there is where the tile starts. Or that ditch is dry. It seems like it's, it's yeah, and I mean that's what I mean. Like I said, we once it gets on a private property, we can't take our equipment out there. Um, but I mean, if there's drain tile there, I don't know if it's not working or I don't no, know. It's working. It's going it's right there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I mean, and I don't know. I mean, how much that's supposed to take. I mean, but we got that water going. That it's going there. It's sitting. It's going down the thing. You, you can go there and look. It goes down into the drain tile. Yeah. From where to end of that, um, 
picture is where you see the water you go like four feet, there ain't no water in that ditch. So I mean, the, so that's, that's is it just safe to say the drain pile is taking the water as fast as ever. The drain pile is taking all that water. So okay, so I mean, but it ain't taking. There's too much volume coming down that ditch that it can't take it all at the same time. So then it sits there. Yeah, and I mean, I guess I don't know, like, what we can do. What do you think we should do from here, though, on private property? What, I what, I, think you, what I think you guys need to do is you need to tile it from where that water's coming up and relieve re the pressure and from that water. You know, then you go down and it just gets just dry. It ain't dry by me. Well, I know, and that's what I'm saying. Is this backed up from your place, from Tunzel, all the way out to the same right there. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. What's that? <laughs> no, no. I mean, so I mean, you know, and then as you keep going, I mean, they are, they're, you know, it's functioning, you know, yeah, when, you know, if we go back and look at like rings, the amount of rainfalls, you know, I mean, Ryan, you can remember back, I mean, when you get a one inch rainfall, it's huge. Now we're getting, you know, one inch is not it's really bad. I would say one I, inch, two inch, three yeah. inch. I think to sharpen this up, we're talking about rainfall. This, this problem with this, when it rained, it always did rain away. It just takes a little longer to come out here. I think you're okay. Maybe the community doesn't understand you, but water is being entered into the thing 24 7 every day of the year. It's not on the ground. It's in the cemetery. That's the issue. Yeah. Dry, dry, yeah. 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 We, we all expect big well, rain. We're going to get flooded. Bob, can you give us a little history on what happened here, specifically me and perhaps others uh, with the town of Algoma and what they're referring to? I mean, there was this the sanitary district put uh, ran water lines through that north side of that road. Okay. And yeah, you do you can go down and where there's shutoffs, the water follows the shutoffs coming up from the shutoffs and will is coming up through there. Whether it's you know, well, the or water, is there a debate about that provided a consistent flow of water from the work the town of Algoma done. What is that about? Well, that I mean, and I'm assuming most of that water is coming on the south side there from by Nobles. I mean, I'm just trying to figure what, why that's so dry this morning. Then why it's so wet by me? Well, you know yourself by Bob Hatch and Why well, over like by you? Know, it's it's backed up, but I mean, actually in front of Bob Hatch's house it starts, and that's because you and me both know that the water table is shallower, it's like 20, 25 feet. So when they put that lift station in. They went down all day. And then um, you remember like three years ago, I had Tom Davies come out when you guys were out there ditching the last time, I believe, before he left there. And they did a, they did a study and they said there, they have never seen that much pressure coming off that one well, pushing the water up around the fire hydrant pipes all the way down past me. And his um, theory was the reason why that water's coming up through that dish because when they dug that down and put that line in, they disturbed that bedrock. They hit a spring. They hit a so spring. They did? Bedrock, All right. There was bedrock in the bottom of that mm -hmm. ditch. So, um, so now you got a constant water flow. Now we got constant water flow, and we'd like to somehow figure out how to relieve the pressure off that well. What's the options to the committee? <laughs> dig up that whole sanitary or whole water main and redo well, it. Well, we want to do that. Is a tile system optional to put in some tiling? And I mean, can I we guess, run it I guess through I the I adjoining farmer is, tile line? Right, but I one thing I would advise though, if we, you know, if we do it here, we have to do it for everybody. So we need to look anybody at anybody that would demonstrate a similar or like problem. right, and I can I mean I can get them here. 
because they they're calling me all the time wondering where, where we're at with this ditching and i can get them in here and can you know uh, well, i just think there's more to this island. i mean with with the sanitary district whether this comes down to a legal issue i mean i guess that's something whether the county wants to go after and pursue legal the legality part of this well, like you have to district. find negligence on their side and if they were simply putting in a some kind of a system I assume engineered system. Right. If they did happen to hit a spring and it went through the bedrock, uh, you're getting down into aquifers and that kind of stuff. So then the only solution would be, I would think, would be a tiling system. Now, whether or not this committee wants to agree with that, you put it in, that's up to us. But I mean, I think that's probably the only way you're going to long term correct. Do you have a place to tile too? We could go to the creek, creek, creek. I mean, obviously, you know, you're you can tile to require the some, I mean, depending on your elevations, I mean, you're probably going to have to go over probably some drainage easements to try to get a drainage easement, depending on. So how you'd have to cross private property to get to the creek. I would think, I would, I mean, just. Without looking, I mean, shooting this with elevations, I mean, we should probably have this whole thing surveyed. I mean, start that whole process to have it surveyed and find out what the elevations are and then where you can run that. I mean, you know, we definitely like to stay within the county right away. Right. When you get outside of that, you're going to need permission to run that tile line. Right. And the tile line should be anywhere from a foot to 18 inches below grade. So I don't know where your ditch is going to come up there, but right, maybe that's something we should look at. I don't know if you need it. Just go out and shoot some grade like the guys would on the highway now. What the hell? What's in there for a tie line? You got an eight-inch tie line in there? They said there's a tie line in that ditch? In that ditch? I think and the farmer's got it? Is that an eight-inch? I mean, you can't run to a four-inch and expect it to work. Well, the creek right there, they would go, I mean, they yeah. run through dams, they can hang them. Oh, I run it to the creek. Is there enough drop? But, but you'd have to survey. You'd have to survey that. Yeah. It's a big creek that's further down. Will we have to do this study? The school engineering comments had this study once before. It's got to be five, six. Well, I had to shoot some grade, but 2013. I'm of the opinion, they Janet, they you know, they obviously, I, this is a consistent problem. But it's um, also yeah. a problem of calling a woman the one that does it wrong. I agree. If we have that study and everything, why don't we give it to corporate counsel and have her start there? That's that's my feelings. Well, we can do that too if you want to go for yeah, negligence and that kind of thing. Us. Or who should pay that's for it? it? Well, that's it. It's going to cost us a lot of money if we go ahead. It's not saying that you guys aren't worth it. I could say, though. Throw some tile in it. That ain't a lot of bucks, but. Well, we do have to do surveying and everything. You got to start buying land in that. Well, well you're like doing an easy one. Yeah, what you do. So, we don't want to buy enough. Now, Wilma put down a well. Is that what they did for a water source? The deep well in that sanitary thing. Yeah, yeah. Deep well in the perfect. That's just get the water, that's not the problem. But the problem is when they dump your story, then they get exactly what you said. They had a spray. They, yeah. ran, they ran the city water and sewer all. Yeah. So that's a that's documented in the study? Yeah, I mean, we permitted, if it's permitted, you know, it was all permitted. And, uh, well, yeah, that part of it. I mean, what happened out there? I mean, um, you know, we don't receive as builds. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, the as builds are going to tell you exactly what was done out there, whether it was documented. Uh, that I don't know who the engineer was in charge out there, but typically, the as builds, anything that comes to say hit a well, it's in the as builds, it's documented. That's why they're out there. And so, everything that happens out there each and every day is documented. Step by step. So wherever the as builds, I would imagine would tell you what what if happened. they hit a spring, right? Because they know right away. I mean, I'll pop right out of the ground, so, right? And if I remember way back, I mean, when Tom Davies is here, I remember I 
uh, John Hayes, we tried to get the as built and I don't, nobody ever got them. So I don't oh. know who has them or what, but I know it was from the town of Algoma. The, well, the sanitary district. So they're oh. two separate sanitary district and town of Algoma. They're total two different entities. Right. So that's, you know. Well, we'd yeah. like to have her over the court provision called folks. Here she is. So. That's just my thought. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that as long as we start a process to find a way to correct it. What is the town of Algoma and its indication said about it? It's been 13 years. We're coming back here, but what are those two saying? Okay, what they tell me, Algoma Sanitary District says we live on a county road, it isn't their problem. That's what the town of Algoma says because um, the county maintains our ditches. Okay, once you get to the side work, like 9th Street, Clareville, stuff like that. Then the town of Algoma has got to pay for anything to get done there. But this issue here is a county issue. And and that's what, um, and if you go down and talk to the sanitary district, he's going to wave this golden ticket in front of you saying, hey, John Hayes signed this off. So they didn't think. But there was a public hearing down at the thing before they put this sewer in. We all had to agree. For them to put the sewer in and then what that agreement was is that they put the sewer in our ditches were not changed they stayed dry now you're going to go down and if you go down and talk to that guy at the sanitary district he's going to tell you and he's going to show you pictures of that ditch being wet and that's right the ditch is wet in the spring if you go on google earth and you go back before they put this in, you look at all of our properties, you'll see that every one of our properties, Google Earth, are show that there's water in it, but you'll be able to tell that we were able to maintain that ditch through the fall, and then usually we'd have to wait till maybe end of May before we're able to get into our ditch with our lawnmowers and stuff. You know, me myself, I used to back right in the ditch and load my lawnmower off and on my truck. You can't no more. And um, there is, like Bobby was talking about, there, you know, when the guys were out there ditching, there was four tenths of a drop from Tenzel to my power. Okay. And four tenths, I believe he explained me, was. An inch. Each ten is an inch. So there's only a four inch drop there. And my culvert's up on the uh, east side about three inches because with all the water flowing through there, and I got pictures you guys, I showed you guys them last time I was here, how it ate around the culvert and how when it freezes, it pushes the culvert off and then it tips it. You know, if you go look at their blacktop culverts. Where the blacktop goes over their driveways. If you look at their driveways where they got black, their blacktop, you can see that it's been heaved up and that the blacktop is cracked across the top of the. I think all that stuff, I, if that's great, I don't know that, but I mean, we're just trying to get to the cause of because I mean, you can repeat yourself over and over yeah. 13 years, whatever. So the cause okay. is, is that and we can see the proof. That's our step. Right. The second question I have, and again, I'm new, so I'm trying okay. to this yep. up. And I'm looking at these pictures that you just took this morning, okay? Yep. And I think I heard you say that this goes 24 hours to water deep flow, okay? Yep. But these pictures don't quite show that. I mean, this one here, first picture, or this last picture, shows that the, the yard before is wet, but the next yard, there's no moisture in there right now. And then Look at this other next picture here. This ditch is pretty dry here too. And then you come here, this is where all the water is standing. So I, I guess I'm trying to understand if it's 24 hours, it should be pretty well all wet, but it's flowing all the time. I think I heard everyone say it keeps flowing, right? If you want to you wanna come yeah. down? I will come down, but I'm just saying that's what I see from here. So that's what I'm trying to understand what that is. So I understand all your pictures. I understand, but I'm trying to understand the flow of 24 hours. Uh, uh, Ronnie can show you where that ditch is. You know what I mean? I don't see that. But I think we should do the cost because it sounds like it's you, 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 but get yeah, back to where it is. This has been going on. We could, you know, 
And you yeah. just said, like they told you with county, we don't see it. And you said it in your own words, in 2009, something happened. The county didn't do it. We kind of okayed it sounds like. But somebody did something to start, right? Yep. Right? Yeah, I mean, I'll go on the line, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. You can say, we should do that. You find out who this is, right? Because that was going to play. You can mention the north side, my side, front of the we sit here right now. Yeah. So it takes turn to go on one side. It never, never quits. Never quits on your side. I, I think uh, if I might address that and respond to it, and I agree with Tom, uh, your attorney of all, but if we have to subpoena these uh, as built, yeah. that document is what you need, correct? Well, I mean, I think but, that's going to tell you. I mean, if there was a, a well or a, a spring that was hit, that it should be documented. I should show that. Yeah. Okay, we'll get that document. We're going to do it and get it, and let's go from there. Why couldn't that? Why couldn't that script on the trial be plugged up past that? You mean in that ditch? The first one, the Egan Egan property? Yeah. Good, but they said it is running, but it only is a whirlpool. Right, that means it's going straight. Yeah, but usually tile lines like that got an inlet sticking up. It would be normally be orange. Yeah, where's the, where's the inlet, the vent? It, it froze and it broke. Well, any right, right place there where it was going down. So that could be the purpose of that vent is to collect all the debris. So don't plug up the tile line. How long has that been absent? How long has it been gone? A year, two oh, years. Right, well, I imagine it is plugged up then. Yeah. What's going on? You've got to go in and fix that. Yeah. Okay, we'll have our professional council work on it. And I'm sure any one of these guys, I know I go by every time just about when I come to Dodge, right? so I see it all the time, but I'm sure if any of you want to go out that way, they just more than happy to show you. I see Ronnie steals all the time. Oh, these guys here, now that it's cleaned out, someone's made a big difference. Well, I would have to take a picture that it's probably too long. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's confirmed when they hit that thing with the heat, the range of the gas pumps on the trailer. I told them back then I said that's the problem. I didn't want to call it. If I might, one final question. Uh, and I'm looking at the map, the first page, which identifies the streets and all that kind of stuff. So, this issue we're talking about is wherever, uh, what? Uh, so, from by Fenzel? Which way, east or west, left or right? So, so if you're looking at that map, yes. So from Fenzel to the east to the right, that's the drainage ditch. Okay, and that's the ditch that comes through yep, there. And that takes now, that where way. was this well put in? So I'm on that right um, right. by horseshoe. Oh, okay. it down by horseshoe right. down here. Right. So you really have a water problem from that intersection east. Yes. Um, yeah. No, honestly, it's not going to happen. Honestly, we're going to get that. Okay. Is that all flat in there? Yeah. 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 Chamber. Sure. Going? Ever they tried to test. That's the order. From where you can see it goes through Zigganyagan's farm. Which he doesn't particularly like. I mean, that's farm for him. You know, so that it goes through there. There's a crick right off the map on the right side, right past its farm. There's a crick. And it, uh, there's a crick right there. Why that water? And I don't know. Maybe the county can say why, because that's their land. That whole frontage along that road, just like it is in front of my house. Thirty-three feet. Yeah. And, yeah. Why it can't go down to that crick instead of through the deal that he one. had the ditch and sure one moved back and then it starts going. I mean, there are aerial photos from the DNR house from the thirties. That I mean, this whole thing is water, and I know Kevin Mraz. I mean, I know I've seen the pictures. 
and there was water in them, and I know what that's what he gave to me. Look at it, and he threw them right at me and said, hey, there was water out there existing. But we have looked at DNR in our photos from the 30s, and there's water. I mean, I think in your, oh, by you, right, wasn't this, I think this whole thing used to be underwater. I support that recommendation. I understand. Okay, we'll go on to number five perception CD and coming from highly JJ around the whole time. Um, so obviously, we ran into some delays early because of uh, steel uh, cages they couldn't get and uh, reinforced concrete pipe. Um, the contractor brought in extra crews. Uh, storm sewer was set. Um, last week, they poured uh, most of the mainline paving is done. Um, really looks nice. Uh, one of the engineers came out of the southwest region that uh, is up on this project. And uh, he just, he's used everything on that southwest uh, out there. And, uh, he made a comment on how nice of a job Minton did with the concrete in there. Mm -hmm. He's never seen uh, such a nice job with this concrete. So um, it's good to hear. So now all the mainline paving's in. So now they got to work on the curb, uh, the islands, and that's going to be all handwork in there. So um, the project is, uh, they're telling me that we should meet our completion date. Uh, September 23rd. Okay, good. Um, so good. everything is uh, looking really good on that project. So, uh, um, reminder of a, a solid rock over in there. Is there cars going through there? Yeah. Um, the contractor did say that was one of the biggest things that cars were blatantly just ignoring. Um, a lot of the signs out there are destroyed. I don't know what they cut them up or what. Yeah. I drive all the way around past the school, but I do see cars. So but you don't yeah. know if they live down there. You know? Yeah, we've accommodated. We we made areas so that everybody so if you're within the park within that area where they can park. Um, but yeah, the contractor did make note that um, he, they've never seen a project like that with traffic. Um, you know, they have to keep access to get uh, trucks and material in. Um, but basically, they said their next would have to have 24 hour guards um, yeah. to keep the traffic. They said the people uh, just disrespectful, said it was uh, that was the worst part of this project. But um, so, yeah, we can't get this thing done quick enough to get out of there. So um, but otherwise, yeah, they're promising me that we'll be done on on time with that project. So okay. number six, the session of Public Health Highway T Pioneer Road Project up here. Uh, T and Pioneer. Um, the contractor finished up uh, placing the three inch on double I where we cut that hill, the vision hill down. Um, county crews installed the inch and a quarter. Um, we've got a binder coat down um, and we did put one layer of uh, shoulder material in. Um, so that is open to traffic now. Um, so now the, uh, the contractor is working on Pioneer, strictly on Pioneer. Um, the obviously the soils poor soils in there so uh when you hear the ebs is excavation below sub base so um you were getting a lot of poor soils so a lot of those cuts i mean the ebs were only cutting the extra foot of material but some of these areas um can we get into um uh, i think the last one they may have like a two or a three uh foot cut so there's all some up. extra yeah bad soil in there. Um, so the contractor is uh, working with a very limited crew. Um, last week at a project meeting, I kind of um, had to reinforce the time deadlines with this. Um, so hopefully they, early on, they promised to get two crews in on this. And I think we're getting to that point where, you know, where we're at 
to excavating, they get done. They're getting done in a day. Um, they're going to have to get more crew in there uh, to get this finished. Um, yes. I don't want to interrupt. Are we done with our county road evil? Yes. Yeah. 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 I don't want to interrupt. Oh, no. But here again, I want to say thanks for coming out here and doing something. I tell you, I just want to say this. You guys digging some of that shit out of that ditch, help to get some dry time, some air time, that makes a big difference right there. So any cleaning is always a positive thing. Okay, thanks again. Yeah, we're going to go. I'm going to appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so just basically with uh, with Pioneer there, um, the big thing now is just to keep on uh, schedule, just so we don't with you know with the county crews putting the uh, inch and a quarter in the paving. Obviously, we keep getting backed up, and we don't want to have our back to the wall. I mean, obviously, asphalt plants close, um, you know, deer hunting. So. You know, when you look at time frame here, uh, they got a lot of work to do in a short time. So we're going to keep uh, pushing them to uh, stay on schedule there. What was the finish date? Um, for Pioneer? Yeah. Um, well, they just asked for a two week, two week delay on that. So we didn't approve it yet. So I think we're in, we're October completion with that. So. Number seven, discussion. Holly Cal KA Harrison Street proposed bike lane in the city of Lexington. So it did there is a map uh in there and it's got a couple yellow arrow arrows on there. So Harrison Street, which we call uh, County Road Double A. So it's from Bone Street and A intersection down to Libby Street, Libby, Libby Ave. Um, that's still the county has jurisdiction on that uh, that piece of roadway in there. Um, I did get uh, from an associate planner of community development, um, contacted from Alexa from there. And what they're asking is uh, they're gonna run bike lanes from uh, I think, I don't know if they're coming all the way from New York Street, up Harrison, and then to, uh, to Murdoch Street, and then continue out. So obviously, when they came up to Libby, um, it's county jurisdiction in there. So she was inquiring about putting these in. How do we go about with this? Um, You're referring to the city of Oshkosh. Yes, correct, city of Oshkosh. So we're, so basically, I mean, this is just a, a kind of a discussion so when we get to this point, find out a little more information with this. So what I did was able to find out was, is that um, these are done by uh, signage in street pavement markings. So out in that area, um, if you're familiar with that, I mean, there's a little curve in the road out there, as you can see on that, uh, you know, by Packer, there's a little curve in there and then it goes out uh, it's one lane, but it is curb and gutter. So there is, there's no parking on the curve by Packer, but the rest of it, there was part, there is parking on there. Um, so some of the things we'd have to look at is, is that the pavement marking would just be designating the roadway and the bike lane. What's your, what's your width in your right of way? 66 foot right away? Or I believe so in there. Yeah, there's okay. plenty of right away. There's nothing. I mean, it's curb and concrete, curb and gutter. I'm not sure lane widths. We never really got into that part of it yet. I want to basically just find out what what's involved with this. Yeah. Um. So basically, it's signage and pavement markings. Okay. You know, the bike lanes in the city that I've been on, I don't see any bikes on them, but I see all kinds of kids on skateboards and all it's the long way. <laughs> So we got a lot of them out there. I use the bike lane class. Yeah. And, and obviously this area, this is one of those areas that, um, you know, at, at some point where there's going to be a jurisdictional transfer done with the city, um, we plow it. That's about it. Um, everything in there was it's within the city. And I think the only thing at the railroad tracks was town. Um, so I would imagine at some point, I guess where I want to kind of go with this with this part is is that possibly uh, you know look into a jurisdictional transfer 
of this little section of road. Um, and, you know, whether we, the approval part of this is whether we approve this and then the city would go back and approve the big picture as long as they don't want to approve it if the county does not want to participate. Um, Financially. Well, so this is the thing is what I think what we sh what I'd like to do with them is, is that, I mean, the city would would do all the painting and the sign installation for this project. Um, so I mean, something that we could look at with this, I mean, they, they've already, you know, agreed that they would take care of the maintenance after it was done. OK, um, but I think part of this discussion that we could have is, is that, you know, whether jurisdictional transfer is an option in this area. Um, and then with this, I mean, I don't think as far as like the signage and the street markings, um, whether if the city would just add that cost to their part of that project and add it in, we would just approve it. Um, and then if we could do a jurisdictional transfer, we could just, you know, we could JT it to the city uh, in there. Um, like I said, there's nothing, we, there's no county property in there. All, all we're doing is following that. I was going to suggest that. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's part of the discussion with this. I think is, is that now, you know, jurisdictional transfer, you know, now all of a sudden, now there's a little more into this. Now they can put their bike lanes in there and, um, you know, with this. So I think with How long this, is that, if I might add, a couple blocks. Um, it's just the area. I'm now. trying to think. I mean, it, I don't think it's a well, they have them. Yeah, not quite a mile. Yeah. I think it's like oh, going well, from there to there. Yeah, it's so arrow to so arrow. So that would be Harrison Street, most of Harrison Street. Correct. Yep. Oh, sure, all the way out to that Y intersection. Yes. Yep. I didn't even know we owned that. Yeah. Is that is that the AA? Yep. Is that the road between the arrows or does yeah, it? Yeah. Yep. That's weird. Thanks, that, Tom. I yeah. That and I mean, technic. That's what we've always called it, double A. Um. You know, now it's pretty much just Harrison Street. Yeah. There's well, no like yeah. AA signs on it? No. 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 Yeah. I thought once the city named the street, it was theirs. Otherwise, their well, name and kind. It was kind of always one of those, you know, where it's like, <laughs> you know, like Midway Road and AP yeah. and PM yeah. Valley and all those. I, I frankly don't even know why we still have it. Right. So I think that's where this discussion is, is that, you know, I think this is a viable time now to talk to the city with us about a, a jurisdictional transfer in this area. I'm not against that, but my only question to you is, what kind of money do we get like from the state or whatever for a uh, These little small pace. areas, uh, I mean, it's, it's very- Small add up to more and more. Oh yeah, time. yeah. yeah. Um, the, the only thing is, is that, you know, like these areas, you know, when it comes down to it is, is you know, we do maintain it when we plow, Typically, the city already gets is is out up to that area before we get out that far. Um, so sometimes, I mean, we get out there and they've already done the plowing on it. So it's kind of like they're already maintaining it now. Um, you know, with that, I mean, I can look and see uh, what it comes down to. I mean, they're all broke down. If we can, we can find out what like, that is. I want to know what's sure like per mile. Yep, per mile. Okay. We're probably coming on ahead giving it away. Probably, but if we get that one, then we can do that one. So I was just yeah, wondering what we're doing for a mile. I know town and the little things add up every mile. So well, yeah, our budgets are much tighter now. You know, I'm not against that. I. Right. But I have. Number eight. Discussion was found for the seven to six lights and road intersection improvement probably. So obviously the new Nina High School is being uh, constructed. Um, County Road Double I, uh, you know, we started, when they originally started discussing this new high school, um, first thing we looked at was the intersection coming out the Double I. Um, we required them to have a, a, a traffic impact analysis done Basically, that'll tell how many cars are coming out in times. And, um, and then obviously across the street, we have Kimberly Clark. Um, 
you know, with this COVID, they've they've been shut down with very limited crew and uh, staff working. Um, but at some point when the school opens up, uh, KC is going to be back to full staff. Obviously, this inter intersection is going to be congested. They did upgrade that, put new signal, uh, uh, designated turn lanes to accommodate that. Um, so this is the same thing as with this now. Is now we start looking at other uh, access to this and. Larson Road is the back side of the high school, and there is a, a des and I'm not sure if it's an actually designated um, driveway, but they're anticipating that traffic will use that. Um, then you start looking at where they're going to come. They're either going to go towards 76 out to the west, or they're going to go east out to CB. Well, CB, um, you know, traffic volumes, but I think. Now, when you start looking at 76 with the crash history that's been out there, um, the roundabouts that have been installed. So now um, this has become a very political. I added some of these sheets uh, to that. I mean, Roger Roth um, sent to the DOT a letter. Um, there's been numerous ones. This, uh, the town of Nina has sent. Um, so Tom Buchholz did. Um, send a letter responding to that and kind of given a, um, if you look, they had construction scheduled for the summer of 2026. Um, for that, um, obviously, you know, the right-of-way acquisition is going to be the big, uh, big one here. Um, if right-of-way acquisition, it gets done in a timely manner, they potentially could uh, move that project up. So I guess it, it, as Tom responded in that letter, tentatively, that's what they're looking at is uh, summer of 26 construction for that intersection for that. So um, they did have a public involvement meeting um, and I added that into uh, with that. There was comment sheets um, at that meeting. So um, at that meeting, anybody that had issue, you know, comments could send that in. Um, so that they could address that at that time. So that's kind of where that intersection is looking at uh, for upgrading that. I was at that meeting. They said that it's a, like a possibility to do that. Yeah. Okay. But there's a lot of people pushing. Yeah. Especially with the new school. And also the school district said that uh, they were looking at just Having the Larson Road access be used for sporting activities. Okay. Which would be very helpful. Yeah. And I think those are the what they're looking at is, is until this project can be constructed, what can we do to curb that? So, I mean, where they can push all that up to double I, where it's a, a signalized intersection, obviously, is the safest uh, route. So, I mean, those are the things that they'll look at with that until they can upgrade that uh, intersection to do uh, construction in there. So, general operations. Um, so, we just we got our triaxle we've been waiting for two years ago to pull that tow plow. Um, and then a week ago, we blew a motor in one of our uh, our triaxles, our Western Star triaxle, um, to 2012. Um, it uh, grenaded that motor through the side, right, right out of the motor. Um, so we're looking at quotes right now. I mean, we're looking at uh, for a new motor, fifty fifty thousand dollar range for a brand new motor. motor was uh, they're two different, two different vintage. I think that Oshkosh is quite older. Um, so yeah, so we're looking at a you know a ballpark right now, fifty thousand per brand new motor for that. Um, was not something obviously we uh, anticipate uh, happening. Uh, is that so, a common diesel? Um, I think Western's better up. Yeah, uh, pretty unusual. So, so yeah, it's got 6,300 hours to uh, 2012. Oh, oh wow, um, that's hard to grow again. So, so yeah, it blew a hole in there. 
that big. So it's um, it's no repairing that one. So like I said, uh, right now estimates are right around that fifty thousand range. So so that's probably going to be something that we're probably going to have to address once we get those prices back. We're going to have to uh, go to P and F for for uh, some money for that. Do you have cattle tails on those trucks to see how they're driven? Um, I don't believe so. Most of our trucks. I didn't like it. That was years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Wind her up a little here, they. No, they, I mean, our trucks are, I mean, they're not, uh, they're not tuned up at all. I mean, our, our trucks, uh, with a full load of asphalt, I mean, so they got a hard time going to the speed limit, 70 miles an hour on the roadway. So, um, you know, I mean, the thing is, is when you look at these vehicles and these vehicles and, you know, 90 and humid out, uh, they're running 12, 13, 14 hours a day, go right into winter, 20 below, they're, they're running 24 hours a day. So they're running, they're running the worst possible conditions. I mean, the dust, the extreme heat and cold, um, you know, they don't have a easy life. Um, you know, when it comes down to it. So, I mean, uh, you know, I think back on wood, um, you know. Who's going to put it in quality truck? I, we're getting prices. Uh, that's where it came from. That's who the dealer is. Yeah. Um, Cause that tire guys up quite a bit. Yeah. So we'll, uh, so we'll, we'll find out once we get all the, the prices back. So Are we'll we'll any here? Um, yeah, we have. But I mean, this one here, you know, when you grenade a motor that blew that rod through that side. So now, um, now the thing is what they can salvage off that motor, um, you know. But yeah, we have in the past, uh, we have replaced motors and transmissions here. You met us brought up how we got full staff of mechanics now, or? Well, what, we'll get in. We'll, yeah, so we'll move in here. So, um, Today, uh, this afternoon, we have uh, interviews for mechanics. So um, we've got a. What are the questions? Are you capable of changing the engine? <laughs> I'm sure that's on there. Um, so yeah, so this afternoon we have uh, interviews for for the mechanics. Um, two weeks ago, or yeah, one of this would be the second week. Two weeks ago, we interviewed for operator ones. Um, we had four, four applicants, um, one of out of, we didn't get back soon enough. We lost the Audi Gaming County hired them, um, ahead of us. We did get one, uh, good one out of that group. So working on that right away, uh, uh, HR with background check references. So hopefully get them on staff right away. Um, sure. Stop you right now. Last that went down to gaming was going to take a little long for HR to check them out or what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just, yeah, it, it, too much time elapsed in between there. So, um, so like now, I mean, well, we look at all this stuff. Well, he's got his own people now. He's moved yeah. up in the world. He's got somebody else. So. so now, I mean, they have, you know, given us the authority now, the highway department, to do our own hiring, our own okay. background checks, and all that. So, now so like with these mechanics um yeah i mean when once we interview i think they, they're at like 1 30 this afternoon um i'll be your call yep jumps on me then so i mean by tomorrow morning um by tomorrow morning i'm gonna be on that right away whether we get the offer offer out to them i mean, i shouldn't say uh, an offer for the position pending background check um uh, reference check and then HR has to do the offer part of it. They won't let us. So, so, um, so that's my intention this afternoon by tomorrow morning. If if we're gonna have offers tomorrow morning, so so how many openings are there? And how many? So we have, to be my so we have um, two mechanic openings, and then we have four operators, ones with truck drivers, and then we have one. Uh, operator too, which is heavy equipment operator. So typically the heavy equipment operator will get hired within. So we'll just promote somebody from within 
Um, but then we did have a resignation last week. Um, they're going to walk back at County Highway. So he turned his resignation. Uh, this is his last week. And then he'll be going to walk back. Is he over there or something? Um, yeah, I believe, I believe he does in that area. Yeah. So you're down eight people. So seven. So yeah. So hopefully, like I said, um, with the mechanics, hopefully we we uh, uh, get something done today with the mechanics part of it, um, and then uh, get on these steel ones right away. These truck driver positions, um, so we get some uh, built. Like I said, at least now, um, you know, we can take care of a lot of that within in house here, and hopefully help help them out down there. So we'll take a little of that burden off of them. So, question: Has it always been taking that long? Or I know we, we were supposed to be getting extra people to take pressure off, and it seems like I hear this whole hot like it takes a long time. You <laughs> don't know what you need. I don't know if an HR person, other than not the I T, they don't know what you need. Yeah, it seems like it dragged. You know, you lost one, and how many other people? Yeah, there's, like, there's several reasons for that. One of it is the longer you do it. Things on the books and stuff, and you don't have them all that money goes, it's money that's not spent. So, I mean, I know a lot about it. I mean, the ref, like, I mean, the references, though, I mean, I can see where that turns out. I mean, if you, you know, if you take five people to do references, if those people, you know, everybody's short staffed, are they going to make a priority to call you back for a reference that somebody wants to, you know, hire that person from you? It's probably not at the top of their list. So, you can make all the phone calls and if they don't call you back, you know, so I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sure HR could sit there and make tons of phone calls, but if somebody doesn't call you back, they're, now you're stuck there at that point. And I don't, you know, like I said, I, you know, how that works, I guess I'm going to find out here real quick uh, this afternoon. But you would ask the right question, the HR person. Do they do the work? They show up. No, things that you need to know. Right. I mean, and, 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 and that's the way it is. I mean, you know, um, I've sat in enough interviews. I mean, I can tell you exactly what the jar is going to, you know. But I can see too is that if you have somebody, you got to make sure you answer, you know, ask the right questions. You know. So I mean, that part of it, um, you know, we've been doing it long enough for. I mean, uh, obviously, if they didn't trust us, they wouldn't have said, "Hey, go ahead and do that." But like I said, I'll find out with the, like you know checking for references and that. I, I guess I'll find out on that end how that works. But and another note that again, just taken from being in the car business, you had the truck was a 2012 and it was 63,000 miles of it. Uh, 6,300 hours. I don't know. I know we did a lot of work. If a person, if a vehicle was under 100,000 miles and within 10 to 12 years, they would. Still bend and do something to manufacture. Sure, it's over 100,000. They don't do anything. So I don't know if that would help. You're not some type of manufacturer go back and do something because then you're not supposed to go off, you know, in 10 years. I believe. Yeah, I mean, that's the way I know no. what these yeah. and they did do a lot of consideration, probably, especially when we buy a lot of stuff that they would have to do something. I'm just suggesting that. Yeah, that's another end. Yep, and we can, I'm sure, uh, you know, we're going down with every avenue we can with those, you know, the 6,300 hours. Yeah, it's a lot of hours, but it's not. I mean, we've got, I mean, you know, typically you start getting, we've got equipment that's got 10,000 hours on it. So, you know, um, you know, and that's where the oil sampling, we do oil sampling. So, I mean, obviously that's something we can look at the oil samples. Um, you know, if oil sample came back, you know, good, uh, you know, 750 hours ago, um, it's just one of those something just happened to let loose, but. Um, so yeah, oil samples. I mean, we definitely, uh, you know, yeah. take a look at those. So last one would be on the fire. How do you on that? Still, um, I haven't heard anything yet. Um, I know I still got to work with uh, the uh, the attenuator. Uh, I don't know if you remember when that attenuator got hit up in Oneida County. We lost that one up there. Um, we did get a uh of money from the insurance but that was a uh that was owned by the dot but the county got the insurance money and they're trying to track down where the money went 
because they did give us the go ahead to purchase yeah. use that money to purchase a ton of ones. Um, so now I just got to track down where that where that money went to, uh, so we can you know go back and get well, when? I haven't heard anything. I, as far as I know, um, that machine that uh, cuts those gears, um, they have that thing scheduled out a year in advance. So I think uh, that September, and the beginning of September, I think we're still on schedule um, to have that. They had, there was two uh, two other gears after that that they decided that had to get replaced. So that's what the delay was. Two more gears falling were bad. So back on that money deal, you still go right to the treasurer's office and come back and then find out what that is. I know we've got too many treasures now that yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah I hope uh, hopefully yeah because I know they knew the exact amount that we had that we received um that part of it. So it's just how do we you know do we sign that back over to the state or just to the department and then which I would think would just come back to the highway and then we're gonna purchase another one uh, for the staff for the state. Otherwise it comes time for us to budget we'll end up someplace else. Right. Yep. So yeah, so I sent that in quite a while ago, so that's kind of hoping that I do something pretty quick here. So it gives us the new finance for that's pretty sharp with it. The Brooks understudy. Boss, we work. That's meeting we have tomorrow. Morning, do you have another September meeting? September 19th would be the third Monday if that works. 19th? September 19th. Good. Right. No, I won't be here. I'm uh, going to go to the convention. Now. Oh, that's right. 19th, yeah. yeah I'll be there too. Yeah. You got anybody else going for this? I wait for you. You can your chairman. Do a week ahead or a week after or whatever. I would just send you the week after. Yeah, that works for me too. 26th. Unless you've got something pressing to get before the county board, but you don't. I have nothing right now. All right. Yeah, 26th works for everybody? Sounds <laughs> good. All right. 26th. Both good. So, second. I have a daughter that lives in Arlington, Virginia. Every summer, she comes up. 